Okay, so now we're going to go to try to get this data and access it from Power BI and build a report. So what we have to do first is go to Partner Connect here. So this is the easy way, okay, and, the, and it works well. So let's just go ahead this way and go to Partner Connect. And in Partner Connect, you'll come down here and you'll see this uh, Microsoft Power BI. Just click on that button. It's real simple. It's going to ask you what your endpoint is. And the name of my endpoint is Starter Endpoint, Raw Original, right? And if you have other endpoints, you can use one of those. But in my case, it's going to be Starter Endpoint. I'm going to download the connection file. Okay. So I'm going to download it to the area I've been working with. So I'm actually going to download it into my CSV files. Um, so I'm going to save it there. All right. So now it's saved, right? So at, at this point, what I need to do is close this up. And I need to come over to my account and under user settings. So I have personal access tokens. So I'll click there. And I already have a couple. But I'm going to go ahead and generate a token now. Now that here you want to write it down because you're not going to be able to see it later, right? As you can see from here. So you need to keep this in a safe place, okay? To keep, you know, so you can reuse it. So I'm going to say generate. I might put a comment in here, and the comment's going to be, uh, this is a Databricks POC demo for YouTube. Okay, lifetime 90 days, that's fine. So I'm going to generate it, and there it is, right? So that's the token. Now I need to remember that one. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into a place that's safe. And I click OK. So now I have a, a, a token, and this is going to allow the Power BI to talk to the um, metadata store. Okay. Okay. So now we're back to the folder where we saved that um, that Partner Connect for Power BI, and here it is right here. So all I need to do here. So we're going to go ahead and double click on this file. And when we go in, it's going to open up um, the Power BI. And you want to be on the latest one or close to it. Uh, anyways, you need to be somewhere October 2022, somewhere in that thing uh, or later. All right. So uh, September, I think, is also good, 2022. So now it's trying to connect. And it should come up on a screen for my credentials. So we'll see what it does. And there it is. There's my credential screen, right? And since we created that personal access token, all we have to do is click the personal access token, right click and paste. And now it pastes it in and I hit connect. And that's how easy it is. Very easy, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to see that Hive Meta Store, um, which is here. So you see Hive Meta Store. And then it's going to, you just click there and it's going to show you all your databases. And in this case, I'm going to go to the demo, right? And in the demo, I'm going to open that up. And it's going to show me all my tables, right? So I'm just going to click each one of them because I want all of them in my report. And I'm going to click load. So this is something I was interested in seeing how long it took um, to load from the um, Databricks into the Power BI with a little bit of data. I mean, not a little, little, but, you know, a few hundred thousand rows of data. Um, and I think it came out, it comes out pretty quickly. So we're at, what, probably a m couple minutes. And it's done. In fact, it's done already. Okay, so that was almost a minute, maybe less. And there it is. It's already there for us, right? Okay, so here's all my tables. I can go ahead and go ahead and go to my model and go ahead and arrange these guys just like any other Power BI. And, um,. I'm going to clean this whole thing up here. 
just look at this. This isn't a Power BI, a Power BI class. So, but I'm gonna clean it up and just show you, uh, you know, the speed, you know, how this is working against Databricks. Now, what we're doing is we're importing from Databricks. So once you've imported, it's all it's all in your memory, right? On your Power BI, it's Power BI's turn. It has nothing to do with Databricks after that, unless you're doing a direct query. Then the speed of Databricks counts more, you know, and see how fast it comes back and that kind of thing. But as far as an import goes, like what we just did, it imported very quickly. And now the rest is just database uh, related, just database, I mean, it's just Power BI and connecting your Power BI. So anyways, uh, let me go ahead and create something here. Uh, I don't want you to have to sit and watch. And so uh, I'll be back and we'll look at the results, okay? And, but the, basically we're here and we've got accomplished our goal. Okay, so I'm back and uh, it's been a half hour or so. It's making it look a little prettier. Um, but anyways, yeah, the, it's coming out very well. Um, the report looks decent. And so if you look at the model here, I just connected the primary keys and foreign keys together. Nothing special. It wasn't meant to be. But um, so with all that data in there, well, I think I got about 8 or 16 gigs uh, of memory on my laptop. So it's not really that much, but it seems to be holding its own. Plus I have a, a recorder going and everything else. So it's um, doing pretty well. Anyways, uh, let's see. So this is what it looks like there, and my results are here. So if I click on uh, the United States and I click on, let's go to Wisconsin. There won't be too many people in Wisconsin. Well, and we'll go to Racine, Wisconsin, wherever that is. Probably lots of people there. And I'll go and I say, okay, I want to play table tennis. So there's... Uh, some people over there that are at level seven. Let's say I'm a level four. So I click on four, and there we go. These two people are in that city, and they're a level four. And so maybe I can call them. I'm out of town. Okay, and then if I want to play someone really good, I might go for a pro level. Which, ooh, there's a lot of pros playing over there in Racine, Wisconsin, because it's so cold. People don't want to go outside. I don't know. This is all random data. It comes from, um, I use this uh, this company, this website called Mockaroo, uh, and you can get data from them and they'll just mock up the data. So I was able, like I said, I was able to get 150,000 random mocked up players names from there. And then the cities and the cities and the states and everything that it all is intelligent so it, it you know it knows that madison is in wisconsin and wisconsin's in the united states you get that for all over the world so i really highly recommend mock roof for um you know when you need to get mock data and you want to get a lot of it because you know when you're showing these things if you got to create the data it takes forever and you know you just don't get enough that much data but here it's it looks fairly impressive that you know you have this much data so if i go to utah I click on Utah. So I'm looking at all the people in Utah that are pros. And all of a sudden I got some real data to show. And, you know, it's more, it's just, and especially if you can get there, the customer, the client's data. Uh, now if I want to look at handball, there's handball right there. Let's see if there's a beginner out there. My speed. My, my speed. I can't play handball. Okay. Anyways, that's enough of me talking. I think we're going to end the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. The, the main takeaway from this video is that there's some really easy stuff that, you know, features in Databricks that you can use. Um, and this is one of, this is one little thing. Also, you can um, use this kind of thing. Uh, use SQL, right? Use SQL developers. If you orchestrate it right, you can do almost the whole thing in SQL, SQL, with a very little bit of Python. Um, so you shouldn't fear it. And in what's happening when you're using that SQL, it's using Spark. And that's a big advantage of data. One of the big advantages of Databricks is it's using that Spark engine. Um, it's also using the storage, uh, which is really cheap, right? By using Blob Gen 2. And um, so that's really good too. So 
there's a lot of features that ML is super, the machine language. It has a lot of build and frameworks that are excellent. And, um, and you know, don't be afraid of it. And I just, hopefully this helps a little bit nudge you forward. Uh, if, or at least give you an understanding of some of the ease that's out there for Databricks. Okay. Thanks a lot.